Hey folks, my name is Brian and welcome back to Politic Talks. Today's video might end up being a bit of a shorter one. This is going to be an opinion video on the idea of political heroes. So I'm doing this completely off script. This topic was prompted by the arrest of Julian Assange in the last week. Uh, and I want to talk not necessarily about Mr. Assange, but I'm going to be taking the case of Edward Snowden. And I just want to talk about the idea of making somebody a hero or a villain based on things that they've done in their life. And I just want to underline a couple of things about why making heroes or villains of people is dangerous. So let's get started. So if you're not aware, Edward Snowden was an American intelligence analyst who became famous when he leaked intelligence on several classified American data collection programs. The most famous, I think, was known as PRISM. The reason these leaks were significant is because they reveal that the American government was collecting intelligence on American citizens, which is not something that they were supposed to be doing. I should come right out in front and say I haven't really made up my mind about Mr. Snowden, primarily because, as the topic of this video suggests, he's a complicated person. It's not cut and dry. You can't take somebody's actions and only isolate one part of what they did before deciding whether or not they're a hero. And I'll just take a few minutes to lay out my argument as to uh, why Mr. Snowden might be more complicated than the media is portraying. Depending on what news site you're looking at, or which source you're using anyway, Mr. Snowden is either a patriot or a traitor. I think it's more complicated than that. When Mr. Snowden leaked those classified documents, he fled to Hong Kong. Now that's problematic for me in terms of painting Mr. Snowden as a hero because China, which Hong Kong is obviously part of China, is not exactly a bastion of media freedom. So I, I haven't spoken to Mr. Snowden at any point. I've never interviewed the man, so I can't get inside his head in terms of his motives. But if you are trying to release the secrets of the American government because what you believe the American government is doing is unconstitutional. I would think, now that obviously this is not easy, but you should stay and face the consequences and not run away to a country that has a poor track record when it comes to media freedom, and that's an understatement as far as I'm concerned. And then after he fled to Hong Kong, as far as I'm aware, the last known uh, movement of Mr. Snowden was inside Russia. So upon releasing classified American intelligence documents, he fled to one American intelligence rival and then fled to another American intelligence rival. And don't get me wrong, I absolutely understand that it would be very difficult for Mr. Snowden to find somewhere like uh, the UK or France to flee to because obviously they would turn him over to the American government because the American government and the British or the French government are very close allies. So in terms of a practical argument, fleeing to Hong Kong and then to Russia makes total sense from a self-preservation standpoint because it's very unlikely that you would be extradited to the United States for committing what the American government views as a crime. Especially, and this is the important part here, when the leaks that you have just dispersed, when, you, when you've leaked these documents, the Russian and the Chinese governments benefit from that action. So it makes total sense that those governments would be willing to conceal you from the American justice system. I'm not really going to touch on whether or not the whistleblowing system within the American intelligence community would be a more practical option for Mr. Snowden, because I, I've never worked in any intelligence community, even in my own country, so I'm, that would be way beyond my expertise to talk about. But in, you know, in terms of the pure political uh, thing, 
fleeing to China and then to Russia makes absolute sense. If Mr. Snowden had released these documents and then stayed in the United States to face the charges in a, a court of law, I would be absolutely on the side of Mr. Snowden because I, I would truly believe in that case that he was a patriot because he did what he thought was right and then stayed to face the consequences instead of fleeing to a country that, first of all, benefited from the leaks that he had just released. Another reason that I am seriously conflicted in the case of Edward Snowden is that he was also responsible for leaks that compromised the intelligence of other countries other than the United States. So he was an American citizen, but he also leaked documents on other Western intelligence agencies. There's an argument, obviously, that he was trying to help people other than Americans because other Western intelligence agencies were doing similar things along the lines of what the initial release documents of the American government proved that were happening. So it makes total sense that he would want to do as much good, quote unquote good, as he could with the information that he had. I understand that argument and that he would be only be sheltered by the Chinese or the Russians or people who benefited from that uh, Western intelligence information compromise. I understand that. I'm just saying that it's not as cut and dry one way or, or the other. And the reason I'm kind of playing devil's advocate here on the establishment side of things is because chances are people who watch YouTube videos are more likely to be anti-establishment than establishment. That's just, I'm playing the numbers here on this one. It might just be as simple as Mr. Snowden wants to have his cake and eat it too, so to speak. He wants the public to know that their governments have been spying on them, or at least at the point that these documents are relevant to. And he also wants to live as a free man. And he doesn't think that there's a chance that the American system of justice would ultimately exonerate him for going outside the usual whistleblowing channels and releasing these documents. I, I understand that entirely. I just, I, what I want people to come away with after watching this is that people are complicated. Everyone's motives, nobody's motives ever go in one direction. I mean, Mr. Assange is in the news lately. WikiLeaks is a perfect example. It's perfectly fair to say that WikiLeaks has provided a service to people in the West to show that the governments are often exceeding their authority when collecting intelligence, which is a great thing for people to know. But if Robert Mueller's investigation, for example, has proven anything, it's that Russian intelligence has given information to WikiLeaks in the past. So it might be Mr. Assange's intent to improve the world by giving citizens a better view of what their governments are doing, but they're being used by foreign intelligence communities, such as the Russians, because in an open Western world, information can be more easily dispersed, whereas leaks like this would never happen in Russia because somebody like Snowden would probably end up being killed before he could release any of this information. Anyway, guys, this was an extremely disorganized rant, but I hope you enjoyed, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.